Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for nice words. Uh, I'll talk this morning, Rickettsial uh, Exposure in Ruminants and Dankeys. And uh, during this presentation, we will update my colleagues' data about zoonotic. So this is the first time based on what we found. Uh, on behalf of all my colleagues, I want to thank all and present this this afternoon. OK. Uh, during my presentation, vector bone disease transmitted by lice, mites, fleas, and ticks. Uh, and it's most prevalent almost in poor communities all over the world. Uh, hard tick are the main vector that transmit rickettsia. Normally, uh, for uh, phylogenetic analysis, they differentiate these rickettsia into four groups. SFG, which is spotted fever group, which is the most prevalent worldwide, and it's mostly associated with ticks. So Rickettsia Africa, it's one of that, both is a zoonotic, notable causing to African pipe fever. So, and it's the second after mosquito, and among travelers returning from almost sub-Saharan African countries. So many factories are contribute to transmit this disease, and it's also a part of the recent and ongoing tick-borne races. And the, uh, there are many things that contribute, include climate change, wildlife management, land use change, and as well as bird migratory and increasing wildlife and human interface. So, tick almost likes the, inter the interaction to their host and which, which is a comfort zone of this tick-borne pathogen. And it's also, as I mentioned, a zoonotic disease, is, but it's usually self-limited. At some case, it gets complicated because of some immunocompromised people or elderly, and it's almost 50% case are asymptomatic. The, the distribution of this bacteria almost in most African countries, but if you see in the map, Somalia is lack of data regarding the spotted fever group. And there are almost 30 species in this genus Rickettsia. Almost 17 of them are prevalent in Africa. And there is no data in Somalia. As my colleague mentioned, we are livestock dependent. Almost 65% of Somalia are nomadic, who raise different types of livestock. And it, they play a crucial role in livelihood and food security as well. And then case, which neglected when it comes to research, is essential working animal and use it for transportation and agricultural at somewhere. And the main thing is a multi-species grazing. It's common practice in Somalia, and it's a comfort zone of this pathogen transmission. And the states in Somalia is unknown, so the, reason, the aim of this study is to investigate the rickettsial exposure in livestock and dengue's in two different regions. So we collected a total of 402 serum samples from goat, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. After collection, we analyzed serologically just two selected species, Rickettsia africa and Rickettsia ribicephali, because of the, based on the geographical distribution. And I did this analysis in Department of Veterinary Medicine, Veterinary Medicine, no, Preventive Medicine and Animal Science in Sao Paulo University, Brazil. And it was immunofluorescence assay, IFAT. And uh, normally, and this analysis is working in is dilution. We dilute almost 1 to 64, one, one just microlit of serum, and 64 then phosphate buffer saline PPS. And we dilute until to now how this parastemia is high or it's low, until almost six times dilution. So this is the overview of how uh, that process works. 
at the end of the process, we need to go with the microscope to see. If you see that green light color, that means there is a positive. If there is no, that's the negative. Whenever you dilute, that green color may decrease until, you, until all disappear. And, and, and uh, at that time, you will know how the exposure or the, the titration raises. OK, in our result, uh, we found almost half of the animals that we tested are seroreacted, at least one rickettsia species. That doesn't mean there is a rickettsia bacteria there, but the antibody at least was there. Almost 20% of them were rickettsia africa, which is a zoonotic one, and 10% was rickettsia ribocephali. And almost the cross, uh, the cross reactiveness or the co-infection between two diseases is very high, which, it, uh, which, is, which may cause uh, more complicated. Cattle and donkeys and sheep are more likely to get positive when compared to goat. Okay, here are overview of uh, the result as well. Here is the cutoff point. That means where, when we get positive, we titrate until it gets negative. So here you see in cattle, in goat, you know, we found until dilution of 1 to 2048. That means five times higher or higher positive. So cattle, almost they have like 90.2 percentage positive when it comes to just presence of rickettsia species, ignoring just whether it's rickettsia africa or ribocephali. But when it comes to divide into rickettsia africa, almost 50.4, and rickettsia ribocephali just 0.8, which is almost a non-pathogenic one. And then case, almost 83.3, they may be a reservoir of this disease, and all nomadic animals, they keep together all animals, which may also contribute the transmission and the spread of this disease. OK, in conclusion, this is the first based on our knowledge. And the high titration of Rickettsia Africa could be related to the presence of these tick species, amblyoma. In another study that we did, we found many amblyoma, but specifically, Ambilioma virigaitum, which uh, presence in Somalia based on the literature, but Ambilioma hebrium, it's not there. But it's still, the rickettsia is very high. Underscores the investigation further and to understand this tick-borne disease. And it also acknowledge the interconnectedness, animal health, which human health and environment also contribute when it comes to this, under the One Health Framework. And the lastly, I would like to acknowledge all my colleagues just to make this happen with freelancer. Thank you.